Hi, I'm Daya Charton. I'm here at USB Aid's We Read For You, and I'm going to be covering a book by R. Ray Wang called Disrupting Digital Business, Create an Authentic Experience in the Peer-to-Peer -peer Economy. And it's all about providing business leaders with advice and insights on how to create new business models, transformational business models that really disrupt thinking and understand a way of operating within this new digitally connected world. Looking at this whole disrupting digital business, I think one of the big things that he talks about is that 52% of Fortune 500 companies in, the, in recent years have either merged, been acquired, just shut down or completely fallen off the wayside. And a lot of that, he says, is attributed to the way they approach business. That they've looked at things and gone, we've, we're doing what we've always done. And when you've got a shifting consumer, when you've got shifting modes, you've got things that are changing around you, if you're not constantly changing, if you're not understanding why you change, then you, you leave yourself at risk. This is about a mindset, and it's about changing business models because of changes that have happened within the digital world and the connections that it's provided. When I saw this chapter title, I was like, this is music to my ears, you're preaching to the converted. Because keeping a brand promise and understanding brand is something that we're seeing a lot of people focus attention on and energy on, and for very valid reasons that get explained and unpacked quite a lot in this chapter. So we've seen changes and acceleration in the delivery of innovation. We've seen the need to drive friction out of business models because that's what consumers want. They don't want friction. And in a world where they're connected, they can make choices based on what is the most frictionless experience for me. And we look at some of the businesses, you look at some of the, the concepts that have come up within this time. You look at things like social media, which didn't exist 10 years ago. Cloud computing, video and unified communications, mobility, big data, the internet of things. When we look at this, we go, brands become absolutely critical because they become critical to a consumer and they are what the consumer feels about you. It's those brands that understand their reason why, that absolutely are true to it in everything they do are the ones that will succeed. Because within this new interconnected world, authenticity and the authenticity of your brand promise is absolutely critical. We were in the game of selling products and delivering services, where now it's actually about delivering authentic experiences and outcomes. Authenticity is absolutely key because the need for trust and transparency increases dramatically in a digitally connected world. You absolutely have to be focused on transformation and you have to be focused on the outcome of transformation and on what it means. Authenticity, again, keeps on coming up. You absolutely have to be authentic at all times. You need to be intention driven. It talks about being networked and one of the big shifts and changes in the way that we have to think as businesses because it's not about me doing it on my own anymore. So how do we actually start to do that and how, we, how do we explore these concepts of business model transformation? And one of the first things that he speaks about is being true to yourself. When you call, talk about disruption, this isn't just going, we'll fix it piecemeal. It's about making massive change at a big level. Um, so those who do it successfully get to understand what the root cause of the problem is. And they don't have that mindset of, oh, there's nothing wrong with us in our industry, we're all good. Understanding the possibilities and being brave to address and actually take those possibilities and those options, they push the limits and they look and go, how can we take things to the very top? So incremental um, innovation is actually, it's the new norm. It's like, if you are not changing, you know you are falling behind. We know it. We consistently have to look at things and go, how do we tweak this? How do we improve that? You know, how do we make this that much more efficient or this work that much better? There are very few businesses out there who do the exact same thing today that they did 10 years ago. There's always incremental change that is taking place. But what happens and where it's different within transformational innovation, it doesn't necessarily just improve. What it actually does is it looks to completely break through. First of all, you have to understand your own DNA. So how do we as a business operate? And secondly, understand the business model shifts that are taking place out there. 
he says one of the exercises that you need to do is actually decide what type of organization are you. So about 5% of the world's organizations sit within the market leader space. So those are people who actively seek change and who are innovating, who are going, what are we going to do that's different? We don't want to do anything that anybody else has done before. We want to do it differently and we want to be the best at it. Your fast followers are very quick to react. So they don't want to be first. They're watching what the market leaders do, but when they notice what they do and they like what they do, they move, but they move extremely quickly within that adoption. They make up about 15% of the world's organization. Um, next, the majority of people actually sit within the cautious adopters. So they'll watch, they'll wait to see what goes mainstream, they'll wait to see what gets picked up, and generally they have to justify their decision. So there'll be a lot of investigations that will take place, a lot of reports, a lot of analyses, a lot of studies done because there's, there, there's no disruption that they want to occur within their current existing models. And finally, you've got your laggards. So these make up 30% of, of organizations. And these are the guys who really are having that view of, well, we actually, we're doing great. Um, I'm quite happy with how things are going. You know, I don't really need to change. And they'll only really change when they absolutely, absolutely have to. Wang talks about the fact that for this to be successful, you've got to have a seat, have a seat at the executive table. The executive of the business, the people who are driving the direction of the business, people who take ownership of the direction of the business, actually need to buy into it. And this digital transformation has to sit at that table else it is not going to succeed. So in chapter three, we've talked about the data exhaust. Who here goes, oh my word, there's so much data in the world right now. And it's exactly about that. And it's going, we are swamped by it. But, this is the but, it provides incredible opportunities to get context. And context then drives the relevancy and engagement. And we start to move to what we're calling mass personalization. And this is scary. 90% of the world's data has been created in the last two years. And 80% of that data is what we call unstructured. So it's things like comments, likes, um, shares. It's, a lot of it is, are things that people are sharing and creating. It's not just about getting this information in, because data is useless if you don't understand it. You can't understand how it's relevant. And you start to then also understand, why are people doing this? Why are they liking that? Why do they feel this way? And then how do we shift and how do we do things differently that, that can connect to them? He talks about that we've got a real-time information overload. I mean, how often have you said, oh, we need to get it, we need to get it real-time. And he's going, no, you don't need to get it real-time. You need to get it at the right time. So it's right information, the right time, the right mode, at the right priority level. And how we get there is through understanding the context in which, we, which we're getting it. We need to look at the roles and relationships within these networks, the time and frequency that this data is coming in, we need to see the location because that determines things quite dramatically. Where are they when certain things occur? What are the business processes behind that? What's the sentiment and what's the level of trust? And the data <coughs> leads us to understand context better and context leads us to insight, which are still absolute gold, which lead us to make better business decisions. And what is really coming down to, how do we actually ask the right questions to bring that relevancy to the surface. And ultimately, it's going to lead to what we're calling mass personalization. And that is the ultimate goal. So that on an individual level, everything is personalized, but it can be done at complete scale. He also talks about the nine C's. So you've got to look at culture, community, credibility, the channels, the contents, and the cadence, how often they're doing things. And then what's the context? What are the catalysts? And what are the currency in, in which they, they're operating? And what are the currencies in which they expect reward? And currency doesn't necessarily mean monetary. Chapter four, and he uses Fox News as an example here, and he talks about how do trust and transparency enable authenticity? Because I've spoken about it and you've seen it come up a lot. Authenticity is absolutely critical. So you have to earn trust. And transparency is there to validate the trust. And there's seven key elements of trust that we need to think about. First of all, it's durability. How durable 
kind of how long have you been trusted for? Consistency, we know this. If I, if I need to be trusted, I need to be consistent. I need to be competent in what I do. If I say I'm going to do it, I'll do it. I need to be, I have to have timeliness. And meritocracy, I need to give you fair rewards for that action. Accountability, I need to be accountable and there needs to be mutual respect between us. And he uses Fox News as, a, as an example because they've allowed their individual presenters to build their own personal brands. And he does, he talks about this, the fact of utilizing the network effect of employees. Often we try and stop people from being their own personal brands. So how do I start to build this intention-driven mindset? How do I, I look to the future to start to go, okay, this is where I need to get to? I supply shirts and I've got blue shirts and I've got red shirts. And in one area of the country, blue shirts sell better and another one, red sell better between April and May and then blue sells better. And what's happening is that with data being able to come in, all of these processes, these sort of decisions will be, happened, will be taken automatically. So intention driven design has to start with self-awareness. It's moved already into predictive modeling. So this is where the smart, smart algorithms come into play. You look at wearable tech. This is such a fascinating space. I'm so excited. These are enhancing consumers' lives, but what else are they doing at the other, at the other end? They're creating data points that we can then get context out of, that we can get insights out of, that we can then use. And we look at deterministic models. We're all about fixed processes, and we're moving away from deterministic models to actually go probabilistic models probabilistic models, predictive models. And we're moving into this whole space of networked economies. I'm co-innovating, I'm co-creating with other people to really build this. But now, what's happened, it's not just peer-to-peer, -peer, it's point-to-point -point or person-to-person. -person. That's what eBay does. That's what Facebook does. We're seeing organizations of five, six, up to 20 people who can cause a complete disruption. They don't have to have the size within an organization to have the scale because digital allows them to have that scale. And we think about it, there's five different types of networks. It's my individual network, so it's the people I can connect to. There's direct teams, partners and alliances that I build connections with. Extended value change, which is something Apple do so well. And advocate ecosystems. You know, an authentic world, it's all about what other people say about you and building advocates that really talk about your brand is so important. He also goes into talking about some of the challenges with freemium, um, where I'll give away, you know, in the past we used to say, okay, I'll give away 1% to get you to pay 99%. We're now going, in a digital world we can scale, you can afford to give away 99% to get 1% because the scalability, my incremental costs are so much lower. The final chapter really sums up and just reinforces a whole lot of these principles that we've been exposed to along the way. And there are five key steps. You have to design new experiences and business models that reflect a brand authenticity. You've got to develop and nurture that culture of the digital DNA that we've spoken about. You've got to apply new technologies to existing infrastructure in some instances, move from gut-driven decisions to data-driven ones, and attract new partners to co-create and co-innovate on their platforms. Designing new experiences is all about understanding mass personalization at scale. And then the new technologies, brand authenticity is absolutely paramount. And looking at how augmented humanity actually helps us improve our decisions. Data-driven decisions actually give us the opportunity to get to right time contextual reality. It's not about real time, it's about getting the information at the right time that I can draw, create context and then draw insights. And when we look at finally co-create and co-innovate, it's creating the ecosystem of collaboration. And you realize it's more about what you're not going to do than what you are doing. As he says, it's very important when you create these partnerships and realize that's a space I'm not going to go into. And create those partnerships then on a number of different levels. And finally, to finish off, I just pulled this quote out of the book where he talks about digitally transformed organizations do differentiate themselves with higher margins, greater market share, increased brand relevancy and massive scale. And this is where we want to go as we live and work in this era of digital business. And that is me. Thank you very much, guys.